Hello again, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of Good to Know Shreveport Bossier. This is a podcast showcasing the good things happening in our community. My name is Jeff Beinfort. This is Paul Reeser. My, he's uh, Robin. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> he's the uh, former owner uh, of about, what, 40 Sonic restaurants and the current like president that. of... Uh, the Reeser Group and a member of the uh, board of the Committee of 100. And every week we're going to be focusing on com economic development, community growth and projects, other topics about initiatives having a positive impact on our community. Uh, we'll have new episodes every other Wednesday. And you can find Good to Know wherever you listen to podcasts with a video version at ktbs.com. Paul? Take it away. So I get to introduce our guest today. I'm super excited because our guest, I would consider a local treasure in Shreveport, Miss Liz Swain. Ah. Well, we're off to a flying start. We yes, we are. <laughs> so when I when I first moved to Shreveport, you were on the news. You were the anchor on KTBS Channel Three. Seventeen uh, years. Was it? Seventeen, 17 years. Wow. years. Wow. And then Hardly. the predecessor. Child labor. Child, whole, whole child labor. <laughs> Well, no child labor uh, when Jeff took your place. Whoa! But, wait a whoa, minute! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Dis. If only they could have heard the pre-show. Uh, but anyway, but you went on from that to become spokesperson for Mayor uh, Keith Hightower. Yes. You you were also a liaison for the city, and then you went on to be now you're the executive director for the Shreveport Downtown Development Authority and uh, another nonprofit that you're super excited about. Tell me I about am. the nonprofit. So it's called the Downtown Shreveport Development Corporation, DSDC. It's completely mm. separate, different boards, different way of being funded, but the same goal, which is to make our downtown as dynamic and cool and colorful and vibrant as we can possibly make it. Well, I'd say, uh, so you were one of the first people that I met, actually, when I came here. I remember. Came down to your offices. You have cool offices, by the thank way. Thank you, thank you. It's a historic building mm -hmm. that we rehabbed, you know, kind of walking the talk, showing people what can be mm -hmm. done with those yeah. old buildings that they look at every day and go, wow, what is that? What could that be? But uh, but people wanted to make sure I knew that, that you had been an anchor here at Channel 3. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Everybody who comes in and meets me who's from one of the TV stations is like, you used to do this, right? And I said, yeah, <laughs> like 100 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that long ago. So do you miss it? Uh, let me ask you that. Do you miss it? Um, I do miss the people. I miss the excitement mm -hmm. of different stories, not really knowing what the news is going to be on yeah. any given day. And let's face it over the past several years. News has been pretty darned exciting. Yeah. I love election season, love, you know, mm. politics and things of that nature. So in that regard, I do, but I love my job. You know, this job that I have now as executive director of the DDA and DSDC, it is not often that your vocation and your avocation are one in the same. It's mm. like the thing you love and the thing you do for money right. are one in the same. I try not to say that too often because my boards may say, well, if you love it that much, <laughs> just do it for free. Sure, sure. of course, yeah. yeah, be careful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Got to be well, careful about and, that. And today we're going to be talking about downtown because it is exciting Perfect. also the downtown. And I know you are such an advocate for downtown Shreveport. And yeah. it is uh, an opportunity for us because there are great buildings. And, you know, we want to hear about what's happening downtown Shreveport. Why do we want to revitalize it and what is happening to get it revitalized? Okay, so we've got three hours? Is that, is that correct? Because this is, uh, whatever you, know. you want. Three weeks in a row. This can be a mini-series. I'm excited. Well, it, it really could. It, it really could be a mini-series because <clears throat> when you look at the history of downtown, I mean, that's where it all started, right? Right. That's where Shreveport started, right there, that yeah. little Shreve town, that little place on the river where the riverboats finally were able to get to after the Red River Raft was cleared, and, you know, that was our first community, and we just grew from there. So everything historic that you will ever want to know about can be found right there. So downtown Shreveport uh, has grown over the years. It has changed over the years. It continues to change because the one thing that is certain is nothing stays static. Why are downtowns important just in general? Why are they important? They're important mm -hmm. because they show what your community is writ large. If you have a downtown that is not doing well, that is suffering, that is sketchy, scary, uh, abandoned, what does that say about your community as a whole? Mm -hmm. What we want our downtown to say is that our community as a whole is vibrant, is diverse, is exciting, and is on the grow. 
and that's mm -hmm. what we work on every single day of the week. And when you have that vibrant, the oldest part of the city being vibrant, yeah. I mean, that just kind of spreads out, right? It does. It does. It does. There have been many, many very wise people, mayors from cities all around the country who say that if you don't have a vibrant, exciting downtown, then, you know, there's something really wrong at your core. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, downtown is the core of our city. It's the heart of our art and culture, the mm -hmm. heart of our festivals. You know, it's where people come to live, work, and play, that old saw, live, work, play. You know, you hear <laughs> right. that a million times, but it's really true. And we're seeing more of all three categories happening in our downtown. And you alluded to it. You, you really have a passion for this. I can I tell do. that the first uh, time. Yeah. It, I can just bore yeah. people to tears talking about downtown. I really can. <laughs> but I like old buildings. They're neat. Yes. They're very cool. Um, so what's a challenge like uh, in taking one of these old buildings mm -hmm. and turning it into something cool for today? Well, the challenges are certainly is that it's an old building. And because it's mm. old, there's a possibility that it hasn't been maintained as well as uh, we yeah, might like. Sure. You know, there's something called demolition by neglect. Right. So we do have some vacant buildings that people haven't been paying a lot of attention to, the mm -hmm. owners, over the years. Yep. And so you get a building like that and you may run into things that you weren't expecting. So the cost of the rehab may be a little bit more than you were planning or a little right. bit more challenging. We do have ways around that. We've got something called historic tax credits that you can mm -hmm. get either at the state level or the federal level or both mm -hmm. to help kind of ameliorate that risk that you are getting yourself mm -hmm. involved in. And so there are other, you know, challenges as well. There may be uh, parking issues that you'll have to deal with and be with that too. Yeah, right. We probably need to talk about parking as downtown, but, but for people that haven't been downtown for a yeah. while, yeah. Uh, what are some things that are happening? You talk about the art district. You talk oh. about some buildings that are that are being restored. We've so. got a number of buildings that are being restored or that have been restored recently. We've got an old mm. Sears department store that is now these beautiful cool. loft apartments yeah. with the Rhino Coffee and all kinds of little businesses. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, that's a super neat building. How many yeah. apartments are in that, and how? So full there is are that? there are 53 apartments in there, and it's a generally 100 percent occupied, wow. and you have to get on a waiting list. I mean, people really want this stuff, right? They do. <clears throat> they do. They have told us time and time again, and I'm telling all of my developers, and I meet with developers every week, they come to me mm -hmm. and they say, Liz, tell us about the buildings. We're very interested. What should we do? And I try to steer many of them to residential. Hmm. Our okay. size city mm -hmm. and our size downtown is underbuilt currently for residential. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, a city our size has about 2,000 residential units in their downtown, sometimes much more. Okay. But we are currently at around the 900 uh, really? number. Really? So less than half. Right. And we have more that are in the works. But um, what that 2,000 does, that's kind of a magic number okay. to encourage the gas stations and to mm, encourage okay. the grocery markets and things of that mm. nature who will look at, you know, when you were deciding where to place a Sonic, right. there was a lot of science that went into that, wasn't there? Absolutely. Traffic. Oh, yeah. You're, traffic. I would patterns. normally look at you and think scientists. Yes, no. Burgers, you, no, 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 no. You <clears throat> want you wanted a place that people location, could. Location, location. Location, yeah, location, yeah, location. Very, traffic count. The determiner how we started. Right. What the neighborhood was around right. you. How many people might come mm -hmm. and get a burger on any given day. Right. Same thing is true. Mm -hmm. Any good business person is looking right. at that same thing. Sure. That right? definitely is the challenge. When you start talking, well, what do we need if we have 2,000 homes? Well, we need markets. We need grocery mm -hmm. markets. Uh, we need th th ways for them to survive inside that infrastructure. There's mm -hmm. some fun things in there. I love the Robinson. Mm -hmm. I love uh, Pepitos, some new restaurants Pepitos. that are opening. We've got loads of restaurants. We've got the Strand mm -hmm. Theater. We've got the Emmett Hook Center. We've got art space. We've got a variety of things to do. But mm -hmm. we also are seeing uh, the rise of the infrastructure that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about COVID for a minute and how COVID has turned on its ear many of the things we used to think that we knew. And one of those was grocery markets. You know, when mm -hmm. I cannot tell you the number of times over my years with the Downtown Development Authority, how many times people have said to me, but you don't have a grocery store downtown. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened when COVID hit? You didn't need a grocery store because oh my you, goodness. well, remember you could go to the grocery store and they would put it in your trunk mm -hmm. or you could right, have it true. delivered to your door. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't stopped. Yeah. And so there are other ways now than the That's traditional right. driving, getting in your car, driving to the grocery market. Mm -hmm. But we do have a, a family dollar store that has things like milk, bread, dog yeah. food, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And we have a developer who is looking at doing something called Urban Proper, 
which is a small market that will have things like bread and cheese and mm -hmm. uh, beverages and casseroles. Mm -hmm. Let's also remember that people who live downtown, typically, it's not a, not huge families that are right. in a two bedroom mm -hmm. apartment. Right. It may be one person or two people and a couple of dogs. Mm -hmm. And so they don't need a big pork roast, right? right? They might not need the types of things that we would see at a traditional uh, grocery store. Mm -hmm. So the things they're looking at are easy to cook, maybe pre-cooked, all you have to do is heat them up, and mm -hmm. delivery is a big deal as well. Yeah, I can't, if I can't rip it open and eat it, I don't buy it. <laughs> there you go, and there's a whole lot of people who are like you. You would love me in Sonic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so I, I have, a, <laughs> I have a, two questions. Let's yeah. start with this one. You mentioned the tax credits. Yep. Uh, how hard are those to get? They are not very hard to get if you're willing to do the things that they ask you to do because the state and the federal government potentially are giving you money or giving mm -hmm. you access to credits on your taxes. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain things they want you to do for that mm -hmm. money, which is understandable. So what you do is you when, you, when you buy your building, when you determine if it's a contributing feature and the DDA can help you with all of that, just mm -hmm. call us before you buy a building. We'll tell you if it is or is not. And then you do your scope of work with your architect and your engineers and all of that and you submit it to them and they will tell you what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you do the things that they ask you to do and you prove it at the end of the project, they will send you a piece of paper that is your tax credits and then mm -hmm. you can sell them for like actual the, dollars. Like the movie credits? Yeah. You can sell these yeah. like movie credits? You can actually Ooh. sell them. Okay. Wow. Okay. The state credits. And then you can, you can use that money for whatever you want to do at that point. You can pay off right. your debt on that building. You can buy a new building. You can mm -hmm. go on a cruise. It's whatever you want to do. So the, the, the city, is there, are those city tax credits or state tax credits? Those are state and federal. Now, the city does a couple of things. The mm -hmm. city participates in something called a restoration tax abatement. Mm -hmm. If you are buying an older building, if you're rehabbing it, if you're spending, let's just say, several hundred thousand to several million on that building, which is mm -hmm. not unusual. Mm -hmm. um, the city believes and the state believes that you should keep that building at your pre-improvement uh, property tax level for five years to give you the chance to start making some of that investment back. Mm -hmm. And so they participate in the restoration tax abatement and they also give free permitting to historic buildings uh, that are being worked on in downtown Shreveport, which can be tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. um, that you don't have to pay the city of Shreveport. And then we will try to guide you in other directions too with, you know, if there are any grants that may be available and things of that nature. And you talked about meeting with builders. You yeah. Said weekly. Developers. Yes. Developers. Yes. Uh, yes. And so what, and there, I assume <laughs> most of them are mostly interested in uh, uh, residential, as you said. But are they, are they, do they look for other things too? Are they looking they to develop commercial? They do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when we're talking about residential downtown, we're talking about commercial because it's multifamily residential. It's apartments, okay. it's condos, it's things of that nature. Right. It's not a, it's typically not taking a building and making it single family residential. So like one family lives in a big building. Right. That's typically not what right, we have right. because most of our buildings are much too large for that. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you may have a great collection of salt and pepper shakers, but you probably don't need 30,000 square feet to display them. Well, I have but a lot of maybe. superhero statues, so <laughs> I, might, I might need those. <laughs> but you may, yeah, yeah. So, um, but people are looking for what is called mixed use, yes. which is really the, the way to go, because mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the lofts at 624, which is the old Sears building. Mm -hmm. And they have apartments up here. They have a Rhino Coffee down here. They have an investment firm. They have mm -hmm. an embroidery shop. And then on the mezzanine, they have a lot of health care. They have people who do uh, facials and people who do acupuncture and people nice. who do massage and uh, mm -hmm. web designers and things of that nature. So we're seeing a lot of buildings with right. this really vibrant mixed use, which is mm -hmm. great for the tenants because you come downstairs, yeah. you get your coffee, you yeah. have your breakfast, and you know, it's just a wonderful living environment. Yeah. Sure, sure. So a developer <laughs> comes to you and he mm -hmm. said, uh, how does this work? Do they go, what buildings you got available? Yeah, how, pretty much. Is that it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes they'll drive around and they'll say, what can you tell us about this building? And right. we'll tell them everything we know. 
Um, a lot of our buildings downtown may not be on the multi-listing service, may not be represented mm -hmm. by a realtor, but potentially may be for sale. Mm -hmm. And so we'll um, you know, try to guide them in the right direction. We'll also let them know what legally they can do under what's called the Unified Development Code, which is the mm -hmm. zoning for downtown Shreveport. Mm -hmm. Because we never want anybody to buy a building with an intention of doing something with it that is illegal right. under the UDC. So we always mm -hmm. try to you know, make sure that people know exactly what they can and can't do. So going, going between, so we started kind of talking about residential mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. also these mixed use buildings. Yeah. So retail is very important. Mm -hmm. But uh, before we move on to the next thing, yes. even though I want to buy some of those tax credits, yes. Uh, We'll put I, don't, you on I, don't want, I don't want to bore you guys about we'll tax credits, list. but yeah. that, is a, that is huge. It's a good thing. That it's is a, a good huge thing. thing. So mm -hmm. you can literally buy credit. I can buy credits at a discount and reduce my tax bill. Yes, you can. Jeff, this is amazing. Anyway. I'm feeling bored. I know. I know you are. <laughs> but, but, but people yeah, out there well, that, that want yeah. to buy tax credits, this is awesome. Yeah, all those people out there listening <clears throat> who are like into tax credits are <laughs> like, woo! Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> and We're like, also, if you want to build. But what is, you know, if I wanted to move downtown or even be downtown in the evening, to go to some of these yes. restaurants. A yes. lot of people think there's maybe there's safety concerns about downtown Shreveport. You know, that so is... <laughs> what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, well, oh, I've got a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you asked, Paul. As a matter of fact, I couldn't have fed you a better question. But no, that that is um, the, the biggest misconception that I have run into over mm -hmm. my years in downtown. When you look at the pure facts, when you look at the documentation, from the Shreveport Police Department, it will show you that the district that includes downtown is the lowest crime rate district in the city of Shreveport. Really? And the typical crimes that we have in downtown are crimes of what I call opportunity. Don't leave your car unlocked with stuff mm. in it that people can see because it's just, you know, then you become a target. Right. Um, and we do have some panhandling. You know, people mm. may come up to you and ask you for money. Um, there, we have litter, uh, you know, we have, we have things of that nature. Every once in a while, there will mm -hmm. be a, you know, a terrible crime that will be committed, but crime can happen anywhere. There might be oh, a shooting yes. or something of that nature, but they are so few and far between. And mm -hmm. they typically happen with people who know each other, you know, maybe domestically related mm -hmm. or something of that nature, which is certainly no less a tragedy but it happens so, so infrequently. But one thing that we're doing to combat that misperception mm -hmm. is uh, we have been working with uh, the city on deploying security cameras or the real-time crime center cameras okay. in portions of downtown. We have those. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of buildings and businesses that have cameras of their own because cameras just make good neighborhoods. I'll just <laughs> tell you, cameras yeah. are always good. But we, the Downtown Development Authority, are doing hirings off-duty hirings of police officers on busy days downtown, but you never know when, mm -hmm. but we are wor we're walking the beat. So our officers are in their uniforms and they mm -hmm. are actually on foot which people love yeah. Yeah. because they see them, sure. they can interact with them, mm -hmm. they go in the shops, they go mm -hmm. in the theaters, they go in the stores, they talk to people and they are doing a great job. The yeah. response has been tremendous. The thing too, let me just say this very quickly, that make people feel like they are unsafe is when no one is around. We're herd right. creatures. We mm -hmm. like other people right. being around yeah. us. So when downtown is empty, when you're the only person walking down the street, yeah. you just feel like you're more at risk. Mm -hmm. You just, whether you are or aren't, you feel as if you are. So the goal is mm -hmm. to get more people downtown. The more people, the, the more you feel safe because there's somebody that, that will hear you, that will respond if there is a problem. Well, safety comes in other forms or lack of safety, mm -hmm. uh, like some of these old buildings may have mm -hmm. some real problems. Like you, you lost a big building yeah, recently we did. down there we did. Uh, that, that burned up. Yes. And, uh, so how much uh, of a problem or how much in danger are these old buildings for things like that? Oh, always, always. And I think when you when you watch the news, as, mm. I, as we hope everybody does, <laughs> you see that uh, buildings are victim of arson, yeah. you know, homes in neighborhoods, typically vacant homes, because mm. they're easy to get into. Any building, whether it's a, a single family home or a large commercial building, if mm. it is vacant, it is right. a target. You know, people try to get into them. 
uh, for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. And once they're in there, maybe they're up to no good. You know, you just yeah. have to assume that. Yeah. Or maybe they're just doing it to keep warm. You never know, but mm -hmm. the outcome can be the same. You can right. lose that important building. Yeah. And that's why we do not like vacant buildings. Right. We do not like vacant buildings for a variety of reasons. That's one. Safety, security is certainly a big one, but it also diminishes and lowers the, the uh, tax, uh, uh, tax base. The tax base is lowered, but it also just, it puts a pall on the entire area. Right. If you've got a, a lovely area with a really funky, his, uh, you know, vacant building sitting right, right there in the middle of it, mm -hmm. it's just going to bring the feeling mm -hmm. down right, sure. for the whole area. Sure. And so these property owners have a responsibility they right. have a responsibility. Sure. If they don't want to rehab, repair, utilize their building, they need to put them up for sale at a reasonable amount so someone can. And we have those conversations and we're having additional conversations okay. about how to encourage that. Great. So there's people that do want to buy the buildings, but they're just not for sale? Absolutely. Interesting. I cannot tell you the number of people who, who have called me about a, a couple of buildings in particular, and we mm -hmm. have not been able to engage the owner, and we cannot force. You know, the right. state of Louisiana has very strong property rights, individual mm -hmm. property rights. Mm -hmm. We don't ever want to take property away from anybody, mm -hmm. but people have to also be a good neighbor and be mm -hmm. willing to do something with that property. And so. So people that want to live yep. downtown. Yep. What are they looking for? They're just thinking, I like these cool uh, old brick walls. That's what I want to have? Or well, let me tell you a cool story that yeah. happened just the other day. So my husband and I live downtown. Okay. We li we've lived downtown for about the past five years, and we generally walk our dogs about 6 o'clock in the morning, generally before the sun comes up, and we're okay. out in the evenings as well. And Again, never had any problems. But uh, one morning I was walking with a girlfriend, and it was about 7.30 in the morning, and this uh, Sunday morning, and this gentleman drives up in his vehicle and he jumps out and he runs up to me and he says, I'm so-and-so, and he said, and I live downtown. He said, I'm from Bossier. I recently moved into downtown Shreveport. I live over there. He said, this is the best place I've ever lived. I tell all my friends, I wow. love it. I love mm -hmm. it. I love being downtown. He said, I'm close to Festival Plaza. I come over here to Rhino Coffee in the mornings for my coffee. I walk to the restaurant. He said, I come mm -hmm. to Robinson Film Center. He said, I love it. He said, I want to buy a building <laughs> <laughs> wow. and, and convert it, convert it into residential. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, call me. We can help you. We can definitely put you <laughs> yes, in the right yes. direction for that. But that those are the types of things people really do enjoy. They're looking for something unusual. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell all of my developers, mm -hmm. do not do four a low ceiling and four sheetrocked walls. You right. can get that anywhere. Right. You can yeah. get that anywhere. The beauty of our downtown historic buildings, high ceilings, architectural detail, big, beautiful yeah. floor to ceiling windows, you know, everything from mid-century modern to mm -hmm early uh, 1900s and late 1800s, brick mm -hmm. walls, wood floors, all the types of things that people are right. dying to see. You know, it can be industrial vibe or not, it's entirely up to you. But those are the things that we have. I love those kind of buildings. So, I know. So what is the, what is the near and semi-near future look like for downtown? What do you see mm -hmm. coming? What kind of res uh, residential, what mm -hmm. kind of retail is coming? And what mm -hmm. can we look for in the near future? So I think that we're going to see more, definitely more apartments, the Petroleum Tower, which is a 14-story building that's been vacant now for probably 25 to 30 years Oof, wow. at the corner of Texas Street and Edwards. So one of our prime right. streets mm -hmm. uh, has been purchased by a group out of Illinois, and their intention is to do market rate apartments in that building, which will be huge. Um, we have the Unita Biscuit Lofts, which is an old, beautiful oh, yeah, brick cool building, building that's mm -hmm. going to be coming online for apartments in April of 2023. We've got a variety of other smaller projects. The Bayou Grand, which is the new construction right there, kind of at the corner of Common and Caddo, continues to fill up. One interesting thing, when Bayou Grand first opened their applications about a year ago, uh, so that people could apply just to get their name in the hat for, for those apartments. Of the 1,000 people who applied, 600 applied for market rate. Those are mixed income apartments. What, yeah, what is market rate? Market rate is a standard, like if you're going to the Willows or Champion Lakes apartment, or it's, it's a, the, the basic 
market rate. Affordable housing is generally uh, based on your salary. Mm -hmm. So it depends on your salary range and there's a, a salary high that you cannot go above in order to get market rate. And then there's the typical, what, what we believe of as low income section eight, mm -hmm. um, sometimes called voucher housing, things of that nature. So those are the three types of housing. So there's a market rate building, does that limit the, your, your top end? No, market rate does not. Okay. Market rate That's, does not limit your top end. I you, hope that, you, was, that doesn't sound like no. what that means. No, you, you pay the same rental mm. no matter what you're making, just because you want to mm. live in that very cool building. So, you know, mm. it's somebody who makes $40,000 a year will pay the same rent as somebody who makes $140,000 mm. a year. Affordable housing, I believe that the top uh, salary right now is around maybe the thirty two, thirty four thousand dollar range, mm -hmm. and then it goes from there. It stair steps okay. from there. Do uh, people that live downtown? They don't necessarily work downtown. They go all over, like to over to Bossier or they do or out in the suburbs or whatever. And, they do. They yeah. do. We do have people who live and work downtown, and I see them every day, like walking from their apartment to their office, which is super cool because <laughs> they never even have yeah, to get in their I like car, that. right? Yeah. And uh, you know, they they come home at lunch and check on their dog and all <laughs> that, and then uh, so it's really very neat. But we do have people who live downtown. When you think about where downtown is, and mm -hmm. you think about how quickly you can get to North yep. Bossier, South Shreveport, mm -hmm. from downtown, even to the port, and, and to Barksdale Air Force Base. We yeah. have a significant number of uh, military folks who live downtown. That's I mean, true. it's it, just, it's a perfect location mm. for everything. You're, it really you're not, is. You're yeah. like 15 minutes from every, There's a lot of restaurants. We're not going to mention them because we get in trouble when we start mentioning 10 restaurants and we leave uh, out You'll 100. leave them out, yeah. But there, there yeah. is great restaurants. So how, does, how do people get more involved if they want to know oh. what's going on in downtown? Yes. If they want to get involved, what, yes. what can they do? So we do something every Thursday, which puts me back in my old news days because <laughs> it's completely deadline. You never totally get rid of you it. You never you? totally get rid of it, right, because it's deadline oriented. But we do a thing called the DDA e-blast, and the e-blast is awesome. It mm -hmm. really is. It's the news of what's going on downtown. It's mm -hmm. the big stories. It's uh, upcoming events. It's things you don't want to miss. And you just go on our Shreveport DDA Facebook page or mm -hmm. our website, downtownshreveport.com. You can sign up for the e-blast. We don't sell your email address, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But you get that information every week. And we do a lot of marketing and we do a lot of events and we do a lot of just, you know, trying to reach out via digital mm -hmm. and all means possible. We depend on our free media, our media partners, you know, when things are are happening uh, and the coverage that is so important to us. So, you know, that's the way we get the story out. That's the way we get the news out. And we right. encourage I'm, people. I'm on the to Facebook page. It reminds me, oh yeah, the, uh, the, the revels happening yeah. right now or whatever. Sign up for the e-blast. You will love it. Really? You okay. will love it. I'm you in. absolutely will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's into all of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what are, what are some of the problems you run into down, downtown trying to, you know, convert all these buildings into cool new so I'll, I'll tell you our big problem, and this is a nationwide problem, and mm -hmm. nobody has come up with the with the uh, uh, the sixty four billion dollar question. It's not a million dollar question. Well, she's got that down to a dollar figure. I got it down to a dollar figure. It may even be more expensive than that. Let, okay, let's go back to COVID. Let's go back to COVID and remember when everybody got sent home from their jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and so across the country, in San Francisco, in Manhattan, in Boston, in Philadelphia, every downtown emptied out. Right. People went home. They either weren't working or they were, uh, you know, sort of working or they were hybrid working or they were, you know, doing what they needed to do from their homes. Right. So people, especially in larger cities, mm -hmm. uh, are very hesitant to come back for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. For one thing, if you're working in Manhattan and you live in Long Island or Brooklyn or something like that, it may be an hour and a half commute yeah. one way if you're lucky, you know, to get right. into your office. And so people are saying, I don't want to give up that three hours anymore. Right. I am going hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so the businesses are trying to get them back, but in some downtowns, like uh, we've been in contact with uh, downtown San Francisco, they're still at 15 15% 15, 15 occupancy wow. in their downtown, their office mm -hmm. buildings, 15%. Mm -hmm. So we have seen the same thing in downtown Shreveport. Mm -hmm. When people went home, um, they are coming back but they're coming back in a more hybridized way. Mm -hmm. So right. they may only be working three days a week from the office. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're working one day home, one day here, one day home, one day here. That affects everything downtown because that is the foot traffic in many cases for our right. restaurants and right. our shops and things of that nature. We love having people downtown in those office buildings. The office buildings are what we call a soft 
office market right now. Mm. And yeah. the office buildings, even though they have leases, um, there just aren't people in the building. Mm -hmm. And uh, my guess is as those leases come up, um, some of those offices will be downsizing. Wow. Okay. So the challenge becomes when you have hundreds of thousands of square feet of high rise office space, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Yeah. What is the next thing? Well, I think those are great locations. When you think of downtown Birmingham, what the University of Alabama at Birmingham has done mm -hmm. in their downtown in moving their medical centers and, and uh, classrooms and things of that nature, that could be a great use for some of those buildings. Yeah. Um, there are a variety of things that, that we can look at, but no one knows what that magic, what that magic fix is quite yet. Right. So those are definitely things that we're watching. Yeah, my sister-in-law is a doctor of optometry at UAB, by yeah. the way. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. He's it's, always got a connection. Uh, every way. every how many how many sisters and brothers do you have? <laughs> I have none. I'm an only child. Oh, okay. I thought you said that was your sister. <laughs> no, my sister-in-law. Oh, okay. Sister-in-law, and uh, you're an only child. I'm an only child, and my daughter is an only child. Oh, oh, it's your and, wife's. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I was trying to. <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All, All right, right, Jeff, you're the man. You, you're the wrap-up guy. Well, I think we're about there. I know you wanted to go three hours. I did. But <laughs> Let's just talk the briefly. The $64 billion question yeah. is, what art is the culture. last thing you want to say? Art and culture, art and culture, okay. art and yes. culture. We're doing, we have the downtown art walk, which is fabulous. It's free. Uh, mm -hmm. You can find about, out about it in eBlast or on our Facebook page. And then we have this thing called Second Saturdays Downtown. And it's okay. to encourage people to come downtown and spend a day in art galleries, doing, having art experiences, mm -hmm. eating great food, and just being immersed in art and culture of downtown. Okay. And Caddo Common Park that has that giant pavilion that's being constructed, that's mm -hmm. going to be opening soon, in, um, very soon, and then they'll be programming that pavilion with things like Shakespeare in the park and concerts. So right. it will just be one more added attraction for mm -hmm. art and culture downtown. There is a lot of neat things down there. You, you ever go to Cyport and the, yes. the aquarium? The aquarium. Yes. There's the casinos. There's, awesome. there's things to do down there. There's a lot of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. If you ever are bored. But I bored, haven't heard of a day. This Every other Saturday you go down there and spend the day in art. Second and, Saturday's down. It's just a push Saturday. to get people to really mm -hmm. think about all the art infrastructure that we have in downtown. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you just never put it all together. And we have this sure. map that you can take and it tells you where to go and what's going on. and all the things to do, and you can find like that on it. our website. Find that on the website. Is there any Sonics downtown? I'm just curious. There is not a Sonic <laughs> okay. downtown. There's not. There's not a Sonic and downtown. And I won't be building any. You know, I'm out of the Sonic I know, business. I know, but you know, so much fun to talk about. <laughs> I thought so. about it, though. There's a subway downtown. Yeah. And uh, I, I had thought about it back in the day. Let's talk. <laughs> I, know I know people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Appreciate you being here. Thank you yeah. for the opportunity. Great it was great. Thank you. And it's really cool appreciate. that you live down there. Yeah. And, you're and quite, work downtown. Quite an ad, quite and an play advocate. downtown. Yeah. I'm like, I can never tell you were in the news business. You're so shy in front I of the know. camera. I know. <laughs> but thank you for coming out this morning. I really, really appreciate it. This is great information. Thank you. All right. Liz Swain from the Downtown Development Authority. And what's, what's the other one? Downtown Shreveport Development Corporation. There you go. <laughs> Nonprofit. They do the same thing, but they're funded differently. Right? That's right. <laughs> okay. I pay attention. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Uh, that's your one takeaway of this whole conversation. <laughs> that's it. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. <laughs> All right, and thank you for joining us for this podcast of Good to Know Shreveport Bossier. Uh, brought to you by the Committee of 100 and KTBS TV. Remember, tell your friends and your colleagues about this podcast. We have new content every other Wednesday morning. And for more information, check us out at goodtoknowsb.com. So have a good day. Let's all continue to make Shreveport Bossier the best it can be. And as always, all of this is good to know. Have a good one. <laughs>